Our game will take place on a grid that holds all the game pieces. When you clear pieces from the grid, new ones will fill in from the top. I've opened up the main scene in the exercise files, and I just have a camera, a sprite with a background texture, and a grid object with a grid script. The project also has some other assets we'll need, like textures and a generic piece prefab that we'll build on later. If you open up the grid script, you can see that it doesn't have much in it right now, but we're going to add to it to create a grid to hold and display all of our game pieces. We'll start by adding some parameters that we can adjust in the inspector. Right now I'm adding two integers, which are going to be the X and Y dimensions of our grid. This will let us control the size of our grid. If you save the file and go back to the editor, look in the inspector, you can see that we can set these values here. So go ahead and enter nine for both, which will give us a nine by nine grid. Going back to the grid script, the grid needs to know what type of pieces we can have in it. I'm going to add an enum for the piece type. Right now we just have one piece type, which is the normal type. I'm also adding count, which is just so we know how many different piece types there are. We want to associate each piece type with a prefab. We can do this by using a dictionary, which associates a key, which will be our piece type, with a value, which will be a game object. At the top, add using systems.collections.generic so we have access to the dictionary class. We'll then define a private dictionary, which has keys of piece type and values of type game object. The reason I made this private is because dictionaries can't be displayed in the inspector. We'll need to create a struct with our key and value and have an array of those instead. I'm creating a struct called piece prefab that has a piece type, and a game object. I'm also going to add the system.serializable flag so that our custom struct will show up in the inspector. Now that I've defined our struct, we can have an array of them that we can edit in the inspector. Go ahead and save and go back to the editor. Expand the piece prefabs array and set the size to one. Here we can assign the prefab for the normal type of game piece. Go to the prefabs folder and drag in the normal piece prefab object to the prefab variable in the inspector. This now associates this prefab with the normal game piece type. Now, like I said before, we want to use a dictionary, but dictionaries can't be displayed in the inspector. What we'll have to do is copy the values from our piece prefab array, which we set in the inspector, into our private dictionary object. First, I'll instantiate our dictionary as a new dictionary with types piece type, and game object, and then I'll loop through all of the prefabs in our piece prefabs array. Since a dictionary should only contain one value for each key, we first check if the dictionary already contains the key. Remember that our key is our piece type, and our value is our game object. If it doesn't already contain the key, then we add a new key value pair to our dictionary. Now we want to display a background behind each of our pieces to make them easier to see. So we'll expose another game object in the inspector that we can assign. Go back to the editor, and in the inspector, drag the PCBG prefab to the background prefab variable. Now that we have a reference to the background prefab, we can instantiate it for each cell of the grid. We first loop through all the rows from zero to the X dimension, and then we loop through all the columns from zero to the Y dimension. Then for each cell of the grid, we instantiate our background prefab. We pass in the reference to our background prefab and then the position where we want the prefab to be instantiated. In this case, we want the position to be the X and Y values from our loop. And finally, we pass in the rotation. Quaternion.identity just means that it's not rotated at all. And finally, we'll make this new background a child of our grid object. If you go to the editor and hit play, you can see that we have a background tile for each cell of the grid. Next, we'll look at how to place a game piece on top of each of these background cells.